I'm willing to bet at some point in your developer life, you've come across a to-do list project. It's a simple exercise that can be used to demonstrate basic programming principles. And for a while, I've wanted to make one, but not just any to-do app, one that I can actually have fun making and add my particular flair to it. In other words, completely over-engineered. But there is one big difference. So a lot of these like task management to-do list apps are specifically targeted at work. And for the longest time I've wondered why work? Why not have something like this for everyday life use? A lot of ideas and concepts that are in the task management space actually don't work. You don't have sprints in your regular life. You don't have story points for the work that you're doing. How many story points is mopping your floor? What is the urgency of doing your laundry? <laughs> Maybe if your laundry is really, really overdue, uh, <laughs> that has a particular urgency to it. And if and if we look at the current field of all these different to-do apps, they all don't fit in with life. They're all really, really work focused. Like, let me show you. It's much better. Oh, oh, there we go. Much better. Imagine you get back home from work and you see something like this to try and tell you, like, okay, you need to go grocery shopping. Like, I can't imagine a grocery shopping list being this complicated. And that's probably explains why we don't see the same kind of stuff in our day-to-day -day life. Is like, there's just no need for this level of complexity and flexibility. In fact, I know people that it was their job to manage these platforms at their company. Like they were hired to go and configure Jira for the company. That's the kind of complexity that we're looking at here. Another one that's kind of straddled this personal professional line is Notion. And I think it's a, actually a really really good product however the task management aspect of it really just isn't there yet it's it's probably gonna come down the line pretty soon another super impressive one Basecamp it just it kind of actually I think it's older than Notion it kind of has a similar feel to Notion but it's definitely more task management oriented uh, monday.com everyone's got been getting these ads uh, so I might as well check it out seems pretty cool same thing with ClickUp this is another one that I've gotten a ton of ads for and now I'm gonna get a ton more ads now that I've actually gone and searched for it. And of course, the king of them all, Jira. It's no difference there. Uh, you definitely can't use this in your day-to-day -day life. And it's nothing against Jira. It's just the fact that you have to be part of the same company in order to send tasks to each other. And that's the main thing that doesn't exist is like, I want to be able to send tasks to my friends. Let's say like right now I have a grocery list that I share with my wife. It would be really overkill if I use something like Jira in order just to share that grocery list. And the current solution that I'm using isn't very sophisticated and hasn't changed in a long time. And that is Google Keep. And just to take you through the workflow of how I currently use it, like I want to make a grocery list, grocery tea. Grocery. <laughs> I want to make a grocery list and then I want to turn on checkboxes. And then I have, let's say, uh, potatoes. I got some autocomplete. And then let's say we have some aluminum foil. Maybe I'm uh, making some baked potatoes. Okay, well, if you have those, you got to have uh, green onions. And then maybe some bacon. Okay, bacon bits. No, bacon bits are disgusting. Just bacon. So then I have my grocery list. I can, uh, I can also change the color of the grocery list to green for like lettuce. Okay, maybe we should add lettuce. Okay, let's edit this thing. You add lettuce and or let's say a uh, salad mix salad mix. cool so pretty basic example and if i want to i can share this with other people here i can also set reminders to like pick a place so if i'm driving by my nearby grocery store i can have it alert me that hey this grocery list has stuff on it and another thing is the synchronization it's not just something that lives on my computer like i've just made that and i picked up my phone and i can see that it has a grocery list and i can look at those groceries and let's say i have salad mix so i'm going to check the salad mix button uh, and then it grays it out and then if I go back over to my computer it hasn't yet re refreshed but if I refresh the page or if I do this oh I even hovered over it and that fixed and it, uh, it updated it so there you go so the salad mix is crossed out uh, and then let's say I got some bacon already or maybe uh, maybe I don't want bacon and then when I look at my phone I can see that it is hello and then when I look at my phone I can see that it's uh, crossed out there perfect right there's a few more features here but we won't really go into that well you, you get the point it's 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 an app that is to keep the things that I need to do synchronized. I know there's lots of alternatives out there and Google Keep seems to be working good for me, but Google Keep hasn't really been changing 
that much ever since I started using it. They, they added some UI improvements, but in general, the feature list is kind of the same. So it's it really is a simple idea. It's got lots of variations, pretty much an unlimited set of features. And the question is like, why put the time and effort into doing it myself? And it really, it's because it's fun. It's because I get to choose what features I want to add. I can ask friends and families and you and see what features I should add and develop them and have fun and record it and show it to everyone. Ultimately, I think these problems are interesting. There is one thing that I want to do, which is very different from a lot of approaches that others have taken in building websites or even web applications in general. And the one thing that I'd like to explore a little bit more is the usage of service workers. Service workers used to be below 95%, now they're above 95%, and that is my personal threshold for what I want to have in my projects. So just to refresher on a service, what a service worker is, service worker is essentially a regular web worker, but it acts as a proxy server that sits between web applications, the browser and the network when available. So if you've ever been on a web page that has offline capability, it's been using a service worker. They can intercept network requests. That's kind of how they do the offline thing, but also do other things like caching network requests and also sending push notifications. Another benefit is that because it's in a different context, it doesn't have the, any access to the DOM and runs on a different thread to the main JavaScript that powers your app. So it's non-blocking. And for me, that's one of the really cool things is that I can then put all of my computation onto the service worker and all the rendering onto the actual page. So we have these two threads working in tandem to accomplish very different tasks. But having the service worker specialize in anything to do with data, I think is a really good decision. It lets the page focus on what it can do best, which is rendering the actual page. And one more thing, you can have multiple pages being controlled by the same service worker. And the main benefit there is that if you have some sort of polling on your website, so let's say you're polling every second and then you had 10 pages open, and that means you're actually hitting your server 10 times a second just for one user. But if you have a service worker managing that polling, it doesn't matter if you have one page or a thousand pages open, you're only gonna be polling your servers at one time, one per second. Did they say one per second? Yeah, I think. <laughs> so here's the basic idea. I'm gonna have all of my backend stuff managed by Firebase and then have a and then have a React front end. So let me just build a quick diagram here. So we have Firebase, that's where all the API is gonna go. And then we have the service worker, and then we have the actual page, which is of course running React.js and using Next.js to do all that server-side rendering and stuff. And the idea is you've got lots of pages, but all those pages are feeding through the service worker. Oh God, this is terrible. <laughs> they're, they're going, yeah, there we go, lots of arrows. But you're only getting one connection to Firebase. And I know some of you out there are doubtful. You're like, hey, there's this is a little bit complicated. I don't think it can work the way that you think it works. Break it. I didn't break it. Okay. Mm, but look at this. I've done something a little bit, you know, not much, but hey, it's a start. Oh, and look at this. I have a service worker and it's in TypeScript. Oh my. And I have a context called service worker and it connects the service worker to it. Don't don't look at the code too closely because it's it's quite rough, but it is a proof of concept. And on the left side, we have my test application. And then we have on the right side, some, this is the cloud fire store. And you can see we have five entries here, but then on the left side, you see there's only two displayed and that's because these other entries belong to a different account. So it's properly grabbing only the entries that are related to my account. So if I change this thing here to and I press update, look at that. It updates on the left side almost instantly. Nobody outside of very masochistic developers would choose to actually write their tasks in JSON. So obviously we don't wanna do that. We wanna make some nice UI components. And if you wanna know how to make a nice component library using Storybook.js, I have a video which is up there. No, there, <laughs> I always get it wrong. 